and at the top of her voice, she shouts, um, this is first class. <laughs> now Lila goes, what did you say? And I hold Lila, no, Lila, no. Love to tour Asia, do comedy all over the world. Did comedy in China, Malaysia, Singapore, India, Vietnam, Cambodia, Brunei, all over Asia. Learned a lot traveling around Asia as a black woman. Uh, that's the black people laughing, they know exactly what's happening. <laughs> black woman traveling around Asia, I get stared at. I get stared at a lot. <laughs> now, different countries, I don't know if you know this, different countries stare at you differently. In Vietnam, they kind of just looked at me and giggled. <laughs> and I was looking at them, look, look at these adorable racists. Look at them, they're so... In Cambodia, they straight up laughed in my face. I'd walk down the street and they'd be like... <laughs> and then the other comedian I was traveling with, like, no, Gina, they're not racist. I've been there before, they're just confused. They're laughing because they were confused because they thought you were a boy. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I think I'd have preferred if they'd been racist, to be honest. <laughs> Same thing happened to me in India. I'm stomping around India. I'm getting mistaken for man 76 times a day. Everywhere I went in India, they're like, hello, sir, hello, mister, come, sir, hello, sir, <laughs> mister, come, taxi, sir, taxi, sir, hello, sir. I take you for food, your buddy, pop it up, sir. Hello, sir. You, 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 sir. Come, mister. Come, mister, sir. Hello. People often get uncomfortable when we discuss race. Let me rephrase that. White people often get uncomfortable <laughs> when we discuss race. And they always try and shut down the conversation. No, I, I, I'm not racist. I don't see color. Yes, you do. Yeah, we all do. I see color. I know you're white. You know I'm black. We all see colour. Otherwise, we'd all be walking around here dressed like clowns. <laughs> I'm not racist. I don't carry a tiki torch. I'm not in a KKK. I don't wear a hood. Uh, those aren't the races the black people really care about. We don't care about those races. Because we know who they are. If I see some twat biscuit in a bed sheet with eye holes cut out... <laughs> Pretty obvious. That's not the racism that I care about. That's not what bothers me. It's the other racism. It's the everyday racism, the undercurrent of racism that black people suffer every day. It's the death by a thousand cuts kind of racism. The, the microaggressions that we look... Now, white people look completely confused at this point. You look at me like that. And it's not your fault. It's not your fault, white people, because sometimes you just think you're making a mistake because this kind of racism is often invisible to the naked white eye. <laughs> okay, I'm a comedian. I travel a lot. I'm going up to Leeds. I'm traveling with my tour manager and best friend, Lila, also a black woman. So I go, you know what? That's Lila. <laughs> I go, you know what, Lila? Let's not drive. It's a long drive. Let's get a train and go up in comfort. So we rush down to the train station buy us two first class tickets, there's a train leaving, so we jump on the train, train takes off. And we're walking through the train towards the first class carriage. We walk into the first class carriage, this white woman is sitting at a table, she looks up, she sees us, and at the top of her voice, she shouts, um, this is first class! <laughs> now Lila goes, what did you say? And I hold Lila, no Lila, no. No, I just grab her by a collar. No, Lila, no. Watch me humiliate this bitch just with my mouth. Come back. <laughs> so 
So at the top of my voice, I say, thank you, lady. But what was it about us that made you assume that we didn't belong in the first class carriage? She starts to fumble. I was like, I thought you were lost. <laughs> and I was like, how'd you get lost on a moving train? <laughs> now, this woman was not alone. She was with her husband. Her husband was sitting opposite her at the table, same table. But we did not see her husband's face for this entire confrontation because the entire time he was hidden behind the newspaper. Just... <laughs> his hands never came down. All we saw were his knuckles just gripping that paper. And they were in their 60s. So they'd obviously been married a long time and he's behind that newspaper going, ah! <laughs> Nosy, big mouth cow! <laughs> 30 years we've been married and every day of those 30 years I've said, mind your own business! <laughs> We're both gonna get beaten up by these two black boys. <laughs> oh.